Okay, I think uh, that's on now. Welcome to another live episode of geekoutdoors.com. So with this new live feature on my mobile device, I think it's gotten a lot better in my opinion. And when I first started using live a while back, when it first rolled out to people with a thousand subscribers, it was okay, you know, and then if you were outside, it, the, it was just horrible. But um, with all of that aside, I'm going to try to do more of these live episodes weekly and primarily I'm going to be using it through my phone because it's just so much easier just to click live versus doing it on my computer. So this week I wanted to go over some stuff on the news, primarily two things. Uh, the first thing is Apple's WWDC, uh, Worldwide Developers Conference 2017. And then the second thing is I wanted to talk about Windows 10 on Linux and specifically uh, my experience and also some news about Windows 10 this uh, recent week. So the first bit of news I want to talk about is Apple's WWDC 2017 and some of the things that was released and also some of the things that I found, I guess, interesting. You know, uh, usually I'm not a big fan of Apple's WWDC because it's pretty much the same thing every year. It's very iterative and there's few things, at least for me, not being a huge uh, Apple fan um, in terms of like being a user and also being really uh, somebody who keeps up on every piece of Apple news. I think a lot of the news on their conferences, uh, they're not introducing anything that's revolutionary in my opinion. Okay, but this year uh, there were some things. Okay, so first and foremost, the biggest piece of news, and I'm going to get into this a little bit more, is the introduction of the new iMac Pro. And uh, that's pretty beastly in terms of the hardware. And then also there is another new Pro. There is a new 10.5 inch iPad Pro. And with that one, you know, it, we'll get into that as well. Uh, it's more about the whole tablet, uh, I guess tablet laptop experience is what Apple is trying to do there and then we also have some new updates to the App Store uh, we have uh, this new AR augmented reality updates that they put on there and also brand new version of Mac it's uh, Mac OS High Sierra that's a really funny name and then on let me see anything else on the hardware front yes we have the new Apple HomePod which is a direct competitor to Google Home uh, Amazon Echo and even uh, Sonos players as well audio players let me see and iOS 11 which is pretty much just another minor software update in my opinion but there is one thing that they added that is new, I guess, for Apple iOS devices, but that have been around for other devices. Yeah, so, okay, so those are the main things. And there's also an update for uh, iOS Watch as well. Okay, so, out of all these, let's start with the... I think the one that is the biggest news for a lot of people, uh, especially myself, because it really caught my eye. Whenever you know Apple, you know, does their WWDC, they don't really. Once again, they don't really release hardware that just makes me say, "Wow, I just I, I gotta have that," or it's something that's so new or beyond anything else that's already being done on other platforms. And specifically, whenever Apple is releasing new hardware, they're really going targeted against. Windows users because obviously that is their biggest competitor in both the whole uh, laptop space but also in the desktop space as well and for years you know Apple just could not compete when it comes to the desktop space okay because if anybody who uses a lot of hardware you know uh, creatives uh, gamers you know the pro level uh, I still think, and I don't think there's going to be a lot of argument here, that if you want the best hardware, you're going to use a Windows platform uh, when it comes to that, okay, versus 
using a Mac because uh, Apple Mac they really haven't upgraded their pro lines of desktops okay now they have done some recent updates to their laptops but in terms of the power once again compared to a similarly priced Windows machine you know you're actually gonna get less but with this Mac Pro, iMac Pro, and you know their iMac line, it's all in one desktop solution. Okay, so it's not a completely separate desktop. Now with this brand new one, it comes in a 5K display, and I'm reading this right now. So it's 27 inch Retina 5K display. That's a pretty high resolution, 500 nits. It comes in 8 core, 10 core, 18 core comes with 32 gigs of EECC memory, but it's configured up to 128 gigs. Storage, one terabyte up to four terabytes. And it's got an AMD Radeon Pro Vega GPU. Um, I'm not sure if it is the first hardware to have the new Vega uh, GPU, but it's got eight gigs of onboard memory, configurable up to 16 gigs. Uh, 1080p camera on the front, and what else it has? It can support multiple displays, great, high resolution. Three Thunderbolts inputs, okay. And Ethernet, okay, 10 gig Etherbit, okay. Okay, so besides the rest of these other specs, I mean, which is common, you know, you should have at least more inputs if you are a creative or if you're using this for a pro user, so that's nothing new. So what really got me was the fact that the the, uh, the 18 core processor, the total amount of memory, and also more most importantly, at least for me, that stuck out for me was the Vega GPU in there. This is gonna be a pretty uh, beastly machine uh, when it comes to specs and it's going to have a beastly price as always with Apple. I think it starts at $5,000. Okay, so that is definitely not cheap, uh, but it does have really, really high hardware specs. Now, wh what do I feel about this? I mean, for me personally, I, I am not at the pro level, but for $5,000, you know, I, I did a episode about our Apple laptops still worth it. And the one thing that I always focus on primarily on my channel when it comes to uh, software, hardware is the value proposition. OK, uh, taking aside the whole fact that if you really love this particular brand. OK, so for value proposition for five thousand uh, dollars, I don't think that's worth the money. OK, and if you are an Apple Pro user, uh, you probably disagree with me, but for five thousand dollars, I could build a custom PC that would just <laughs> be unreal. Okay, and if any of you are PC builders out there, with five thousand dollars, you can do a lot. Okay, and this is the iMac Pro line, so in terms of expandability, it's not there. Okay, because it's it's all inclusive. Okay, so for people who love Apple, I get it, but um, once again, I'm thinking. The price, that's just crazy. That's a crazy amount of price uh, to pay for it without any expandability. That's the biggest thing. Now, the people that they're really targeting, in my opinion, is the people who are, were, or are thinking about moving to the new Surface uh, Pro that we saw earlier, you know, the whole Surface Pro all-in-one desktop that was really high specs at that time. You know, this one definitely has more specs and it has the price to match, but it's really targeting those potential users. And Apple, I really think that they're starting to see that they're gonna have to make some changes uh, because uh, other companies, mainly Microsoft, they're, they're not stopping, okay? And with this iMac Pro line, it's like, hey, Microsoft, we know what you're doing, so we're gonna upgrade our hardware to make sure that we keep those users out of uh, their ecosystem and keep them in the Apple ecosystem. So I do definitely applaud Apple for actually upgrading their hardware. Finally, they also upgraded their MacBook Pro and I think uh, their Apple Air as well uh, with an upgraded uh, Intel CPU, a seventh generation, I think finally. And so we do have some people on the line. Thank you, uh, Annex O and OX Man. OS Tech Guy and Lance. Okay, good morning, y'all. So, uh, Annex, 
and I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing this. Anux man uh, asked if you had a MacBook Pro or what would you have installed Linux Mint? You know what? If I have any machine, I'm gonna be installing Linux. Period. Um, this laptop that I have, I've mentioned it so many times. I have four different laptops. All of them have Linux. All my machines have Linux. Everything has Linux. So absolutely. But you know, once again, it depends on what you're using, right? If you are a gamer, and I've mentioned this many times before, if you're a gamer, you're gonna have to have a Windows machine, period. You know, and even if you are a Mac user, if you're a gamer, you're gonna have to have a Windows machine, okay? And obviously, if you are a, a creative, all right, and you do professional editing and so forth, you're using all Adobe products or Apple Final Cut Pro, then you're gonna need those as well. But with any machine that I have, I'm gonna put Linux on it period you know and um, if I have to run it in a dual boot I will but for me I'm always gonna have it as my main so let me see I'm do, doing through this through my mobile phone so it's kinda hard to uh, see all the chats I really want to thank everybody who's on there I'm not sure what parts of the world yet you're from because it is like 8 47 in the morning here so okay um, OS tech guy and I'll ask what do you think about the stability of Apple hardware well you know I'm gonna be honest since I do not use Apple products I'm probably not the best person to answer that but in general I think a lot of people would agree that Apple hardware overall I mean they are good hardware you know um, when Apple in the 80s when they did have their hardware even though they were the first pretty much for uh, desktop OS's um, they had problems Okay, quality wasn't always the best, especially in the mid 80s, if anybody remembers uh, Apple in the mid 80s. But now, or for a while now, their quality has been pretty good. Okay, so that's my opinion on that. Now, my only caveat, my only exception to that is if an Apple product breaks down, you know, it's for you fixing it yourself, it's probably not going to happen. So, you know, they, they have a built-in mechanism to make sure that you use Apple at that point. That's my opinion on it. So I think their hardware is really good, except that if you do have problems, you're going to have to go back to Apple, you know, or buy a new one in that case. So uh, let me go down the line. Okay, so good morning. And, you know, I'm really surprised by how well this live works through the Bobo device. I am. All right. Good morning, Lance. Okay, Rose Manejo asks, I like to install Linux Lite and I have a brand new hard drive for my Dell Optiplex 745 dual core. One hard drive for Windows XP to play old games, uh, which I agree with. And also the second one is blank with 320 gig drives. You know what's funny is a lot of people buy this Dell Optiplex. You know, and it's a really popular machine if you go on eBay and stuff because it has a pretty good hardware and it's relatively cheap. And so I definitely agree with you right there. That's a great use of it. Okay, so let's go down to Lance is, I hope that as GNU Linux gains popularity, more software companies will produce Linux versions of mainstream packages. Absolutely. I think every single Linux user out there, that is, that's a dream, you know, and the dream is becoming better and better. So if you've been a Linux user, let's just say I've been using Linux for, more than a decade now okay if you were a Linux user since the beginning and you see how far Linux has progressed right now uh, I think it, it's amazing okay so every day things are getting better and now everything is becoming more integrated and seems like everybody uses the internet browser primarily to do their computing and so the operating system in terms of front-facing it's really not as important anymore, at least for most people. You know, most people, they get on their browsers anyway. And if Linux could be the back end for all of them, then awesome, okay? And I hope more and more software is produced. And I did want to talk about that a little bit a little later uh, when I get into the rest of this episode. So let me see. Going back to the uh, Apple WWDC, because there are some things. The first thing is the MacBook Pro, iMac, I'm sorry, the iMac Pro. I'm really glad that Apple did update their hardware because they needed to, okay? They needed to, uh, but in terms of the value proposition, it's just a little too much for me. Now, let's look at the 10.5 inch iPad Pro. And so, 
Apple is not stopping with this. They still want people to see their tablets and to use their tablets as their main computing device. Okay, other, many other manufacturers have tried Android and I think, to be honest, Microsoft has been the most successful with that because of their Surface Pro. You know, because honestly, if you're going to be using this as your main device, I, I think it's very difficult to do that. You know, replacing your laptop with only using your iPad Pro, unless, in my opinion, if you're like a general user and you primarily use your mobile devices or tablets, then I could see it's possible. But in terms of replacing your laptop, I don't see that. And with one of the things that they updated with this iPad Pro, uh, they updated the iOS 11 and they added multitasking on your screen, on your tablet. Wow, that's really, <laughs> that's really magical because uh, I think I remember, uh, you know, I'm being sarcastic here, but I remember Android tablets, uh, Samsung having split screen a long time ago. And uh, I'm pretty sure the Surface Pro has it on there as well. And... Apple, they're really going for this. They're not stopping. Uh, they, they really want the, their tablets to replace uh, laptops. And honestly, I don't think that's the main goal of it. I mean, the main goal is that in terms of tablets, sales have been going down for years, right? I mean, there's tons of Android tablets. But the only one that has, or actually not the only one, the two tablet makers that have consistently been getting better uh, is Apple. Uh, Apple owns the tablet market they have for a long time. But secondly is the Microsoft uh, Surface Tablet Pro Lights. You know, I mean, they, they're an excellent uh, addition, I think, uh, to the whole tablet space. And we're glad they were in there to give more competition uh, to Apple. Because honestly, besides Apple and Windows, all the other uh, Android tablets, as, uh, you know, as much as I really did enjoy using Android tablets, they're just not great. I mean, let's just be real. And so, yeah, 10.5-inch iPad Pro. I don't know, you know, I, I guess if you are a uh, iPad user, you love tablets, then great, but I just don't see the value proposition there. It starts at $649, so uh, that's, that's available now, you can order it. And it's on their tagline, it says, it's got the world's most advanced display, of course, because it is an Apple tablet, so it has to be the most advanced. And it's more powerful than most PC laptops. And so I don't... <laughs> I don't know what that means unless you're including budget level laptops and so it might seem like I'm really hating on this but I just I just don't see the value proposition there in, in my opinion so the iPad Pro I, Pro maybe not <laughs> but in terms of probably the best tablet yeah I think Apple's iPads they're still the best tablets um, for purely a tablet use but if I think, really think about it, I think this, the Apple, I'm sorry, the Microsoft Surface ones are better because you get a uh, full OS on it and you could make it a laptop, okay? So, let me see, anything else that's interesting? <clears throat> well, they really talked a lot about a file manager. <laughs> that's one of their updates. And that's just funny, you know, I mean, when, 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 whenever I do watch a WWDC, things that have been uh, done before, you know, and it's not about revolution anymore anything revolutionary and to be honest it's kind of hard to do that you know a lot of companies they look at how other companies are doing it and they either try to improve it or they adapt it to their ecosystem and so it's very difficult to do that but apple as i've mentioned many times before they are an absolutely boss they're king when it comes to marketing so they could take something that's already been done make a few additions, refinements, and sometimes they don't really change anything. And then they'll market it in a way that this is the most amazing thing ever. So uh, they've done that here again with a, a, a file manager, which is kind of crazy. <laughs> so I think that's it for all the Apple WWC stuff. They did release the Apple HomePod. And I don't know, it's $349. And unless you really like using these uh, assistants, and I think more and more people will use it in the future. Because one thing that every single company is doing, especially the big ones, Google, Amazon, Apple, Microsoft, they are all focusing most of their future development on AI, artificial intelligence, you know, on their mobile devices, on their desktops, on their laptops, on these home devices. That's really where they're all focusing on and that's actually technology that's where we're heading into the future period 
artificial intelligence plus technologies like virtual reality, uh, augmented reality, all those things to support the AI. And so maybe you know we'll be talking more about this in the future. So let's go ahead and go back to comments before I move on to the next thing. Um, okay, and some of these I can't see. Okay. So Rose Manejo asks, I do not like Windows 10 for privacy reason, and it seems that both Apple and Windows are both parasitic companies. What do you think? Well, on the second part of this episode, I'm, I will be talking about Windows 10 on Linux. So uh, I will be addressing that. Okay, so next up, um, Anoxman asks, would you would advise what distribution Linux for the beginners? Well, for me, I always, always advise Linux Mint. Um, that's the one I use on all my machines. I have tried other distros. So Linux Mint for me is the one I advise. But some other ones that I've always talked about, Ubuntu, but you know most of these distributions are based upon Ubuntu. I would say Ubuntu. I did really enjoy uh, KDE Neon, um, uh, Manjaro, and uh, Ubuntu Mate. And I, I would also say, uh, what's the other one that I saw? Enteragos. You know, a lot, a lot of these uh, Linux distributions, they're very easy to use, in my opinion. And I will do a, a follow-up episode on how easy Linux is to use later on. Okay, so my advice to me, always Linux Mint first. That's my opinion. And then all the, all the other distributions I just mentioned, and many hundreds more, but those are the ones that come to my mind. And the ones that I've seen other people use, and also some of them that I've tried myself. So what else do we have? Lance, I'd rather use an abacus, <laughs> dictionary, yellow pages, wall monitor, rotary, dial phone, and watch over the air TV than use any products produced by Apple. Oh man. You know, um, if there are people who really love Apple, and I, I don't blame people for loving the Apple brand or the Microsoft brand, and in our cases, even though Linux is not a brand, it is a brand. We love Linux, okay? So uh, I don't blame you for thinking that way, but at the same time, you know, if you are a person who actually uses that ecosystem and you love it, there's really not much you can say that's going to draw them away from that. But Abacus, that's funny. I want to see somebody carry that around. So <laughs> let's go back. Uh, okay. Rose Manejo asks, I saw one episode of yours. You had an old desktop and you tried to update the system with Linux, but it did not work. What happened? Did you replace the hard drive, then install Linux? Okay, so what I did was, uh, I, I don't think you could see it back there. But I had an old uh, Windows lap, uh, desktop, I'm sorry, it had Windows Vista on there, if I remember correctly. And I tried to update some of this old hardware, and I did. I successfully put a Linux on an old Windows 8 laptop, and I also tried that on the Windows Vista desktop. But the Windows Vista desktop is so old, uh, there wasn't a way that I could, by default, uh, boot it up from the USB drive, so I was not able to install it, and then the optical drive didn't work. So I haven't gone back to it since then, okay? So uh, to answer your question, will I go back and try it? Maybe, you know, I'm not sure, you know. I have Linux on so many things, so I'm not sure. That was just more like, it's fun, you know, and it's an experiment. Okay, hello, everybody saying hello. Shatter, what's going on? Um, Linux has less viruses. Okay, hello. Starting with the controversy. Oh, great. Hey, Shatter. Okay. Okay. So, thank you so much, y'all, for uh, being in this live video discussion. I think, you know, this this time, Saturday, probably works best for most people because I've tried live, doing live in other times, during the weekday. I've tried night, you know. So, you know, as a content creator, you are constantly experimenting. I know that's kind of funny. <laughs> OS Tech Guy says, I was able to run Linux on an Acer laptop from the late 90s. Absolutely. You know, so since we have a lot of people who are on Linux right now, let's go ahead and get to the second part of my episode. And that is Windows 10 on Linux. Uh, so let me go to my, uh, my computer. And so people were asking whether or not uh, I'm running games on here. This is a Double Dragon 2 for anybody who remembers. Yes, it's running on Linux. <laughs> so, um, so I did an episode earlier this week where I actually installed Windows 10 um, on my Linux machine. Okay, and so okay, so I just I just got a, a Windows 10 update. Let me see. Okay, so. 
This is Windows 10 um, on my Linux uh, VirtualBox machine. Um, no problem, Shatter. Thank you. Awesome. Okay, so, so if you haven't seen my episode, and maybe I'll leave a card here later on. A few days ago, I did install uh, Windows 10 on my Linux Mint machine uh, on VirtualBox. And you're probably wondering if you've been watching my channel a lot, why in the world would you do that? Well, a lot of the episodes that I do, it's meant to help teach people Linux, you know, a very general user. It helps to teach people how to transition if they wanted to from a primarily Windows based system or Mac based system over to Linux. Because if you've never used anything outside of those, then it can be very challenging, you know, and sometimes scary for some people because they're so used to that. But if I'm going to do that, I did really need to know more about Windows 10. So then if I had to do comparisons between Windows 10 and Linux, then I could talk a lot more intelligently about it. Okay. So that's why I installed Windows 10 in here. And also, you know, if I'm able to play some games on Windows 10, then I'm going to do it, you know, because um, as everybody knows, if you are a gamer, you need to have Windows. Just, you know, there's no way around that right now. Okay, so, <laughs> so I've been using uh, Windows 10 now for, I would say, about a day. And the way I feel about it at this point, maybe I'll do a follow-up later on. But at least for me, who's Linux has been my primary desktop forever now. And I have used Windows 10, of course, but I don't have a Windows 10 device and, and it's not my main driver. And so using it for about a day now, what can I say about Windows 10? Um, it's Windows. You know, I did a, a live episode last week about uh, uh, interruptions, you know, uh, things that Linux fixed that forced, that forced me pretty much to move over uh, to Linux. And so are some of the things still there? Absolutely. Like, for example, uh, whenever I booted up my virtual machine, uh, my, the Windows already started downloading updates in the background, um, which is not unusual. But in Linux Mint, it's not going to do that unless I tell it that I want to, uh, you know, download updates. But in this case, it already downloaded it and a restart is required to finish uh, installing the following updates, which is 2017-05 cumulative update. And man, I'm already, I'm already starting to feel the Microsoft Windows user experience again, you know. Um, just imagine, you know. If this was my main computer, I started up my machine, these updates over there, and now it's asking me to restart my machine. And of course, I don't have to do it now. But in some cases, if it's a critical update, I, I'm going to have to. And that goes back to one of the points that I made on my last live episode, and I'll probably leave a card up here as well, is that one of the things that I didn't like about Microsoft Windows is it interrupts your computing experience. You know? And so I'm going to go ahead and... Well, I'll restart it later. Well, it says your device is at risk because it's out of date and missing things. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and restart it. Um, maybe that's not a good idea, but... <laughs> so, already I'm starting to feel some of the Windows S type stuff. So, I'm, it's, um, I'm not saying it's a completely horrible experience because there's a lot of people who use Microsoft Windows, okay? But if you've been using Linux for a long time, and that is your main operating system. And then you go back to this and then you start experiencing these things and you're like, man, why, why is it doing this? You know, whereas on my uh, Linux machine, I, I don't get that. You know, I don't, I don't get that at all. And it's, it's hard for me to go back to that. Okay, and I'm glad that I have Windows 10 so I could like test and use it. But I'm glad that it's not my main operating system. Okay, that's... Uh, that's the one thing that I will, I would definitely, I don't think I'm going to change that. <laughs> it's what I'm saying anytime soon. Okay, so, so it's restarting now. And so I'm not sure how long it's going to take before the updates go in. All right. So um, in terms of other things, Windows 10, uh, the whole privacy thing, okay, um, that's not going away. And whenever I install Windows 10, they had all these privacy features that you can quote unquote turn off. But as you know, uh, if Microsoft wanted to push updates, they will, and that will either disable the, the the choices that you made for your privacy, or if you were the type of person who put on, okay, so 
at 30% complete and I have to wait until it's done. So imagine if that was my main computer, you know, and you had a lot of stuff on there. It's going to take a while. Okay, so going back uh, to what I was saying uh, earlier, that the whole privacy thing, you know, even if you're the type of person who is a geek and you know your way around the operating system, even if you install patches or updates or fixes uh, for Windows, then they could still override that. Okay, so let's log in. So the good thing is that update didn't take too long, you know, but it did interrupt what I was doing. And as you all know, there are other updates that you sometimes get that could take sometimes half an hour just to update and you cannot use your machine at that point. Okay, so uh, let me see. Let's go back to here. Uh, just Windows up. Okay. How are you guys doing? Cool. Uh, doing okay. So Windows sometimes forcing updates. Yep, just talked about that. Just checked up a vid by EG named Chocolatey, the Windows Package Manager. Oh, yeah. Awesome. Rose, good. Okay. Learning a lot about these live episodes from various Linux YouTubers. Absolutely. That's why I love uh, YouTube so much. We have a huge amount of Linux users here. And, you know, this is one thing that I wanted to mention about another advantage of Linux. And I think I've mentioned it many, many, many times before. It's the community. Okay, I can't, I, uh, I can't really think of too many communities uh, that is so helpful. You know, if, if you look at any of these Linux YouTube channels, it's not always about, oh, we hate Windows, we hate Mac, you know, Linux for life. No, it's not about that. If you watch a lot of Linux channels, what are they doing? They're teaching people. You know, they're teaching people. They're helping people use a new technology. They're helping people change their viewpoints and things. They're helping people enjoy their computing experience all for free. Okay, and so that's why whenever I see new Linux channels or existing Linux channels, I'm happy because it helps educate more people. And these people would not do this for free. They're doing this for free. Just remember, y'all. So when you're watching this content, I mean, it takes time to do this. We're not getting paid to do this, okay? I mean, obviously, you get a little bit from ads. Um, and, you know, if you do more marketing on it, of course. But this is, you're not making tons of money off of this. I mean, later on, you might. But that's not why these people do it, you know? I mean, uh, if you're doing it, the Linux stuff just to make money, then, you know, you're... <laughs> You're probably going to be living under a bridge or something in the future, but you're doing this because you enjoy helping people. You enjoy educating people about Linux, and I absolutely love that. So the Linux community is awesome. Okay, so and that's probably something that will always be the case. Okay, so Linux updates seldom require restarts. It seems most of Windows updates do require it. Absolutely, absolutely. If you've been using Linux for a long time, you're probably not used to that anymore. It's probably weird to you. Whereas in the Microsoft world or even the Apple world, you know, you're used to restarts. Every time you even update a program, most of the times, it requires a restart. Uh, and that's so annoying. And so I've just barely started using uh, Windows 10 or Windows again uh, just about a day ago. So, but, you know, I'm going to get into this a little bit further. But so far, I don't hate the experience, you know, but I think as I use it more and more um, and I'm getting more of these uh, updates or these interruptions or uh, once I put antivirus and stuff on there, um, maybe it's going to get back to how I felt like before with Windows. It just becomes really annoying, you know, and it'll bother me so much. But once again, this is not my main operating system. I'm using it primarily to learn and that's, that's what I'm using it for. So, um, so what do you think about Windows 10 S? Uh, I did an episode before OS Tech Guy asked, what do you think about Windows 10S? I did an episode before when uh, Microsoft introduced their new, uh, I guess, Chromebook competitors and they're going to have 10S on there. What do I think about it? Um, I think a lot like I do about Chromebooks. Uh, I don't think the value proposition is there, you know, uh, and they're going to be limited even more and the pricing is not going to be that much cheaper than getting a full blown a Windows computer or Windows laptop, so I don't, <laughs> I don't see why you would get one. But I think, if I'm not mistaken, I know who they're targeting. The same people that Google is targeting, the same people that Apple is targeting. The education, you know, education and government institutions. 
that's really who these machines are for because we as ourselves we're primarily a uh, general consumer you know you could even be a heavy consumer right but a lot of these companies a lot of their monies uh, is made in the education uh, government and business institutions enterprise okay so there's a lot of money there and of course all these companies want a piece of it okay so hope that answers that um, great and this is cool everybody like talks to each other it's really cool Windows 10s is for strictly spying <laughs> it's funny <laughs> lols um, Rose asked I had a Windows 10 on my laptop oh man this just I had Windows 10 on my laptop, it screwed it up and went back to Windows 7. Man, yeah, a lot of people, you could try to go back. Of course, if you know how to prevent updates, then I really, really loved Windows 7. And let me tell you, my favorite versions of Windows, in order, okay, that I can remember. Windows 95, because that was such a huge, huge change from DOS. Windows XP, I still have it on here, I absolutely love Windows XP and Windows 7. Uh, those are my favorite versions of Windows and you know I'm just starting to use Windows 10 now uh, besides the whole you know security privacy um, and all the other things that I don't enjoy about Microsoft Windows in terms of purely an operating system I think this is going to be a good a good operating system for sure it's definitely going to be better than if you remember anybody remembers Windows me um, Millennium Edition that was horrible uh, I hated Windows Vista yeah so I think it'd be better than any of those okay so I was very scared okay Rose says I was very scared installing uh, OS and installing an OS was due to these youtubers like geek English Bob's Lenny and others absolutely like I was saying earlier the Linux YouTube community is strong I love English Bob um, Lenny's channel I can't remember his whole channel name awesome there's so many others you know um, and I did do an episode of that on my top five of favorite Linux channels. They're, they're Sparty, yes, you're right. I, I, I use all of those people as well. They're a huge inspiration to me. XP, Shatter says XP still legend for general users. Yes, Windows XP, it is legend. OS Tech Guy asks, yes, I remember. Yes, so these people, I, I think that everybody that's on here, they've been around the block, you know, so they didn't, their first operating system wasn't Windows 10. So, so now there was a uh, recent update um, on Windows 10. There's a, there's a new build of Windows 10, and I think it's just for a few select users. Uh, it'll be rolled out to other people at the end of the year. And as I'm going through this right now, through uh, you know, Windows 10 on Linux, and I, I'm going to do a follow-up episode. I've been wanting to do this for a while. Okay, and maybe anybody else could chime in if they wanted to. But a lot of people say, you know, Microsoft Windows um, is easier to use. Okay, like whenever people think about Linux, they think about the fact that Linux is really just for geeks. You know, it's hard to use. But going back to Windows 10 now, at least in this virtual machine environment, no, I, I completely disagree with that. And then if I went back to my old Windows XP machine and then I compare it to Linux Mint, Linux is easier to use, my, my opinion. And I'm, when I do this episode, I'm going to compare it. You know, I'm going to compare the differences between it. So, you know, such things as, okay, I'm going to, and anybody who uses Windows and Linux, they can, they can understand this, okay? So like for example, okay? So let's talk about your whole uh, desktop environment for a minute, okay? If you are comparing this to Linux, okay, so there are people who design this. They're called UX designers, okay. They they design environments, okay, um, graphical environments, and so many other things. But if you just look at the Windows 10 environment, right, okay, and this is a fresh install, so this isn't the normal Windows 10 that you would buy at the store where it has all the additional bloatware and stuff. And so there's that's to me, if you're gonna use Windows 10, do a fresh install if you can. You know, I think that's a better experience. Otherwise, you're going to have to deal with all the other stuff so you will have more interruptions. So in this case, let's just look and see what we have here. If you open up the start menu on Windows 10, right? Well, of course you have your start environment, but you have ads pretty much. I mean, it's not popping up right at you, but it's the, the nature of advertising marketing is different now. So here, there, uh, there's a game here, Fallout Shelter, uh, King is on there asphalt and I understand they're like 
you know, advertising things because it's part of the service, right? And then if you click down here on your notifications, it's like, uh, okay, I'm, come to, I'm Cortana. Cortana is on my default. But then they'll advertise uh, OneDrive, you know, get your own one, get OneDrive on your storage. And then if you're going through this, just look at this. They have so many other things there, okay? And even if you were to go to your settings, right? In Microsoft Windows, there's so many ways that you could get to your settings. You know, you can go to programs here. You could go to your settings here. And then when you get here, okay, if you click on a uh, menu, and everybody, everybody who uses Windows knows this. When you click on it, there's like multiple, multiple sub-menus, okay? But when you're using Linux, in my opinion, it's very simple. And I'll go through this more in the later episode that I do, but, you know, when you go here, and I go into settings, there, there, it's, to me, it's very, it's very simple, okay? There's not... There's not a lot of sub menus, okay? Whereas in the Windows world, there's so many sub menus, there's so many ways to do things. And uh, now that, you know, using Linux for a long time and then going back to Microsoft Windows, it's complex. You know, the only reason I believe that it's easy, easy to use Windows is because you've been using it for so long, so you're used to it. So when you move over to something like Linux, which in my opinion is so much easier to use, um, it's it, it doesn't get in the way, okay? I, I, don't, I don't really get lost in Linux, you know? Of course, if you're using it for the first time, okay, you will, but it doesn't take long, you know? And whereas, like, here still with Microsoft Windows, you know, I, I still don't know where everything is at. I mean, if I wanted to change something simple, it's like, well, you can't see, but it's menu upon, uh, you know, it's menu upon menu upon menu. And then if you wanted to change things, uh, like, if you wanted to get into the tech part of it, uh, changing uh, your registry, uh, changing updates, you know, so you, in general, when you're using Microsoft Windows, um, and I'm pretty sure there'll be disagreements here, but whenever you're using Microsoft Windows, you spend a lot more of your time trying to figure out how to turn off things, <laughs> okay? I mean, I'm trying to turn off, uh, like, for example, you're trying to turn off the privacy settings, you're trying to turn off Cortana, and then if you're downloading programs, you're trying to figure out how to turn off updates, and then when they release updates, some of those get turned off again. So I spend more time trying to figure out how to stop Microsoft or other vendors from doing things on my operating system, whereas on Linux, I don't spend my time doing that. I just use my operating system, and then I spend more time thinking about using my operating system, which is so crazy, okay? So uh, that's uh, that's kind of weird that it would be that way but once again if you've never used Linux and you've only used Windows or Mac then you really wouldn't know anything else especially most people they're just Windows users and so if you've never had that experience it's okay because you know that's how it is normally right so let me see uh, okay so Lance Lance has uh, been on this channel for a while now so uh, thank you for uh, leaving comments so uh, Linux used to require some knowledge of command line that has changed now. You could get by day to day with just the GNU, with just the graphical user interface. Absolutely, that's what I was saying earlier. Linux, modern day, way easier to use. And, and I did mention this on my last episode. If you wanted to use Linux, you do not need to know how to use command line. Okay, you do not need to be an expert on command line. Okay, but Linux being Linux, it will always have that option. I hope they never get rid of that because Linux, you could be a general user, you could be a power user, you could be a programmer, whatever you want to do, it's your choice. But in terms of people coming into Linux, especially with distros like Linux Mint, you don't need to do any of that. And, and if anything, you're going to have to have more technical knowledge to use Microsoft Windows, in my opinion. You know, because when they do updates or uh, something happens on your system or you need to get to menus or something, it is like sub-menus or trying to figure out things. It's confusing. And once again, even when you're trying to turn off things and you're not sure where they came from or what it does. Whereas in this case, I don't, I don't get any of that. I mean, once you install your Linux uh, distro, that's, that's pretty much it. About the only updates that you get and it's under your control, there's a little uh, update manager right here. You click on it when you want, you click on update, 
And 95% of the times, you do not have to restart your machine unless it's a kernel update. And also, it's a completely different experience. In my opinion, a way better experience. So you're right, Lance. Um, you do not need to know command line to use Linux Mint. Back in the day, you had to. There was no doubt about it. You had to know command line. Okay. Um, Rose asks, I don't know why schools, especially public schools, don't move to Linux. It would save schools boards a lot of money versus Microsoft and Apple. Uh, very simple reason, uh, money. They're not, they're not going to go to Linux. Um, because their ecosystems, the partnerships, that, that this is the business end of it. From a technical point of view, yes. And also monetarily, why don't you put Linux on everything? Well, because there's business around that. You know, there's software, uh, there's services, there's agreements. And that's why these companies, um, thinking of a, uh, as a business, what's the best way for you to um, stay in business? Let's be real. You have to make money to stay in business. The best way to do that is to keep uh, businesses, to keep people in your ecosystem using your software, using your hardware, using your services. And just remember, Microsoft and Apple they weren't just created yesterday. They've been building this up for years and years and years. So are they going to move over? If you were a school or you were a business, all your products, all your services, all the software that you use to uh, teach your kids or uh, teach your uh, employees or so forth, and even all the services that you use with your other business partners or other institutions, they're all using software and services that are part of these ecosystems if you think about it in that way, then it's a lot harder for you to move to another ecosystem. You know, and in some cases you can't because the software or the service are tied to that ecosystem. So I hope that answers that. That's why most schools and or most institutions, government, business, whatever, that's why they're not going to move over to Linux for the majority of it. Unless from the beginning you built everything to run on that uh, in, uh, ecosystem. Okay, so um, and that's not a lot of places. Okay, maybe that will change in the future, but I don't see it. Okay, so um, Shatter asks us, GNU, Linux, or Linux-based distros are not pro-OS to them and, and uh, their share of the desktop. Yeah, uh, yeah, 2% of, yeah, I'm, I mean, I, I would really say it's because of all the business stuff that I just explained earlier. I think that's why, you know. Um, let me see, OS Tech Guy, and it says, you can install software to Ubuntu Mate with one click with the welcome screen. Yes, Shatter, what's your regular daily Linux? He's asking uh, OS Tech Guy. Linux like okay and so um, oh well, this episode has been going on for 47 minutes now so those are the two main things that I wanted to talk about today first is Apple's WWDC 2017 uh, not anything really uh, new as usual but uh, I was glad to see a new iMac Pro uh, new hardware and uh, and a new version of Mac OS High Sierra I guess that was the high points you know and then Windows on Linux. Um, I will be making follow-up videos to this and I'm glad that, you know, once again, normally uh, whenever we talk about this, whenever we have these episodes, there's a lot of people who use Linux and so this is a great topic of discussion. So I think like every live episode we'll be doing something about Linux and I, I enjoy doing that and I really enjoy the feedback and so forth. And so that's it for this episode, y'all. Um, was there any other uh, comments or anything else uh, that you uh, wanted to mention before I close off, but so far using Windows 10 for about a day now um, It's it's Windows. Um, so I, I don't actually see anything at this point that makes me say I hate this besides the, the stuff that goes on underneath Okay, and but as I'm using this more uh, installing software uh, and using it then uh, I will do a, a follow-up episode in the future um, and really I want to compare uh, the ease of use okay because I really, really feel Linux is way easier to use and it should be uh, more accessible to more people all around the world. And so um, with all the people like yourselves, all the other Linux channels, that will help out a lot. But so far, my experience on Windows 10 in Linux, it's, it's not bad. I mean, I'm not going to lie. I mean, it's, so far, it, it's, it's okay, you know. I mean, but once I use it more and more, we'll see. We'll see. So, but I don't think I'm ever, I'm never going to leave Linux. I mean, Linux... Unless something really bad happens with Linux, it's always going to be my main operating system. Now, if I have to get another operating system, like for example, uh, for work, for business, okay? If I have to get a Windows or Apple, I will. 
but they will be separate machines. Um, I don't want to do the whole uh, dual booting thing. I have done that before. Um, even if it's on a separate drive, I don't want to do that. I don't want it on my partition. I mean, I want Linux period on my hard drive and nothing else, okay? So if I did need a Windows machine or a Mac machine and I needed it full time and not just in a virtual machine, I would definitely get a separate machine for that. And so let me see if there's anybody else. Hey, Chris M says, hey, thanks, Geek. Much preach, man. Chris, thanks for watching. Uh, thank you, Geek Outdoors. No problem. Thank you, y'all. Uh, OS 1404 is still good. Yes. Shot tear, but now I'm a Fedora guy. Ah, oh, man, I love Fedora. I remember that was one of the first distros I used. Fedora, uh, OpenSUSE. <laughs> Probably somebody would correct me on that. And then also, uh, I also use, what was the other one besides Ubuntu? Oh, of course, um, I tried Red Hat. And there was another one, I can't remember. But anyway, Fedora, old school. And was Fedora Novell owned by Novell? I can't remember. Okay, so, um, all right. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and end this live episode off. I just wanna thank everybody once again from being here on this live episode. Uh, I'm gonna try to do this every Saturday in the morning because I think that's the best time. And at the same time, I appreciate all the comments I appreciate all the ideas and you know it once we finish these episodes and we're going back to doing what we're doing if you get a chance you know as always if you get a chance to actually tell people about Linux then do that you know do that you know help spread the Linux love you know and it's free it's free to do so all right thank you actually okay so thanks a lot y'all thanks for watching see you on another episode